Hello, in this video I want to discuss the installation of new uh, Octave, a tool that will be used in uh, this lecture series to demonstrate uh, quantum mechanics, quantum mechanical calculations. So uh, Octave is an open source tool, it can very nicely work with matrices and perform numerical calculations but it is not native of, uh, on Windows. I assume that most of the people who uh, listen to these lectures uh, use Windows, but Octave is not a nat native uh, program for Windows. It's been designed uh, for Linux and uh, uh, Unixes, so there the installation is relatively easy. The complicated installation is the one on, on Windows. It's not very complicated anyway. All right, so the first thing to do would be to go to the new website uh, to download new Octave. We follow the link to download. Here is a description of the versions on different systems. So you see new Linux, uh, DSB systems, also Mac uh, and Windows. You have two uh, choices for Windows. The one we choose is this MinGW. And here are some descriptions uh, about the installation. The current release of new Octave is uh, 3.8 but this is not yet available on Microsoft Windows. You can follow here the MinGW ports, uh, uh, the version 3.6 and we will go follow this link to go to the actual download site. So here there are four files to download two small ones, the readmes, you can actually ignore this capital readme, and then packages and the uh, octave itself. Actually, uh, for our purposes, you can also ignore the packages. So if you download the octave itself, it's going to appear in your, well, downloads directory. Uh, there is one uh, thing that might be a little bit nasty here. If you click on it, you get to a website which looks like you have to fill some information. You don't have to fill anything. Just wait a little while and save this save this file. I have already done that, so I will say cancel and I will go to my downloads directory. All right. So here are my downloads. I have downloaded all four, four files. Uh, the Capital README demonstrates the big difference between Linux and Windows formats. So if I open this in Windows, this doesn't have the end of the line um, characters. So this is all trash. We can forget about it. Fortunately, the other README does not have this problem. So in here, there is a description of the files. And if you scroll down, uh, the point two should describe the uh, installation. This is what I will follow here. Well, one thing that is a little bit unfortunate here is also that unless you already use the 7-zip, you have to install the, the 7-zip tool. It's actually a great tool. It, can be, it has its own website, of course. There it can be downloaded and its installation is very, very simple. It's a, a zip tool uh, which uh, can handle all possible formats like gzip, tar, zip, uh, I don't know, whatever. It also has, of course, its own format, and they claim that this format is really good. Here you have the comparisons of the <coughs> uh, size of the files. Con let's say if you compare it to WinZip, you know, you have, you get, let's say, one third better, um, better compression. All right, so you download the file here, install it. That's it. Once you have it installed, you open it. I have it I have its icon somewhere here you open it go to the downloads directory I'm already there and click on the file you want to extract uh, and then extract it click on the minus it will ask you where to extract it so you extract it as it is basically and uh, because this is going to take too long I will skip this point I have already uh, already done the extraction so I say cancel, but you say OK. I close this and I have transferred the files uh, from somewhere else. So this is how your directory uh, would look like after the uh, after the extraction, after the extraction of both files. Uh, so uh, you see, we've got uh, two more readmes. Ignore them, two more uh, to two links and two uh, directories. So for us, 
this directory will be very important if you go in you see that there is already a structure of the program the bin directory contains all the executable files uh, we, we don't need to know anything about that uh, structure important thing is that we have this file in here and what we will do is in the new window here we will create a directory down in your in sort of the home directory of your uh, of your PC so let's say in my case it's the C I'll create the directory octave and I move in this this uh, directory as a whole I've already done that you can go in it's in there the structure of the program is in there so this is uh, the sort of physical installation so we've already installed the program and the only thing now is to edit the link we take I take the link put it on the uh, on the desktop get rid of this I can already close this now the link is supposed to go toward to the to the program itself so I look at the properties and this is how it should look like C octave that's where the directory we created this is the directory we uh, we put in and this is the bin so that's where it should start but more important is up here if you look this should follow the same suit so C octave this long octave name bin and then octave exe executable there is also minus I and uh, line editing option this has to be left in because of some bug in uh, the port uh, to the Windows 8 so once we have this done we can click on the on, on the shortcut and octave will start so this is going to take a while actually quite a long while for the first time it might take a really really long while octave is not this slow normally but i think this has something to do with uh, with porting it on uh, on windows concerning calculations it's fine running anything that uses the graphical interface is not that good so now the octave has already started i can uh, type the pwd print working directory uh, command uh, which tells me that i am in c users thomas that is in my own directory all right this is all so enjoy octave